Right, so we look at Trio Basic uh, keywords. So, uh, introduction to Trio Basic. Uh, what is basic? So, it's called beginner all purpose symbolic instruction code. So, yeah, a little bit of history on how it was original. The basic language was uh, created. All right, so it's basically a family of general purpose high level programming language. So design philosophy emphasize of ease of use. So that's why it's called even basic. So it's globally understood. So uh, so the main programming construct is sequence selections and iterations. So easy to read English like commands. So yeah, this is on the various uh, uh, where they use basic commands before. So a little bit. Uh, on how basic language wor works versus the PLC. So the, for the basic language, is runs from the first line to the end, and then it stops, right? Unless some code is inserted to divert program back to the top or back to some other programs. Okay, so it's just scanned only one time. But in the PLC, it's continuously scanned, and then uh, until it you you can put a timeline when it should stop scanning okay so uh, usually it scans every 10 milliseconds right so even as a fault or whatever it can this one so that's the difference between the basic and the PLC so if later we look at the IEC code uh, so IEC 61131 where you can program under the ladder logics so it's not straightforward as how you do it in the PLC because it doesn't scan. So you have to put some flip flops here and there to ensure it does the sc uh, every every second it does the scan. Okay. So even in the ladder logic, it works same as the basic lines. All right, iterations. So we have some iterations or some basic commands. I think you would have seen the while when loop. <coughs> So it's just giving you a condition. So until it's true, then you execute this and then end. So to this is actually to run it in a loop. So you can do a loop. So if you put while true and then you do a program code until end, so it will execute until the condition is true. All right. So this is basically you do the loop function. Then we have repeat until. So you have a uh, while when loop, then you repeat the sequence so until it turns false. Right? So these are some of the key then for a next loop. So you just use that for four axis zero and one. This is the data main command. Alright. Alright, this is a sequence that I rarely use but uh, to exit for the f for the for next loop must normally complete to the last value of the x so last value of the axis so to come out for the for next loop early you can use this exit function so if you want the program then continues on the line after the next of this okay and continue actually forces the program to go back to the top of the loop all right so uh, you can see here is uh, if uh, input 1 is on, then do a continue and then the A out to 2 is then not set on that pass round of the loop. Then we have uh, the if uh, conditions, right? So you have if and and if. For multiple actions, you have and if, right? For single action, if you, you just have the if. So this is a true and false action. So you have if input on, then what is the action to do else do this then end if so every time when you have a if command you have to end it with an end if so for the multiple conditions then you can use uh, else if so if then test a con condition so if the condition means the action is executed or if not then go to the ne next one so you can add without any restriction okay so this is for multiple condition multiple actions <laughs> all right case we will come to this so case checks on the variables all right 
So each case then numerically equals the value causes the execution of between two case statements. So it actually will compare this. And the program continues until the end case. So you can put, uh, uh, you can set a variety of program and set it as case one, case two, case three. So from case one, you can execute this. So it's this form is ideal for several action dependent on the value of the variable. So the case, you can actually program it to a VRs as well. So for example, VR20 is case, then you can change VR20 to 5, it execute case 5, VR20 to 1, execute case 1. So functions. Yeah, just now we just went through one of the functions. So function must be placed in a basic library. So a function can have value passed to it. A function can return a value. The uh, return value can be single value or an array or containing multiple values. And then you can use it in your programs. So we have more and more people using functions in their programs. So it, it actually makes you easy. It's like a global thing. So it makes thing easy special for something that share between the different tasks the yes. function is very useful yeah. yeah so this is an example this will hold the calling program for 1.5 seconds so useful instructions so there are something like wait until input so that's what I uh, mentioned we don't recommend to use the wait until because sometimes in the program you, you don't know why it's not working so when you, when you, you have to diagnose so if you put a wait until it will just stay there unless the condition is met true so that's why you usually ask to do a wait idle or wait loaded for move but you can still use that if you if you know what is the program doing So labels and go to, so this is for subroutines. So we'll come to that again. So you inside a program, you can have subroutines that doing uh, a certain, it, it works similar to functions, but it can, you can do it in, a, in, your, in the program itself. So you can have uh, one portion doing, for example, data, then it can go back to the main in the same program. Okay. so. Uh, so it uses label to identify specific position in the code. So let's say, for example, you put datum and then you put a uh, semicolon. Okay, then you say uh, at the next code you say, okay, now go to datum. So it will execute that that particular datum command. So that particular, or we call it subroutine, right? So the go to command simply takes the program to the name label, right? So, again, the go-to statement should be used with care. It can produce untidy programs that are difficult to debug and support. So, this is why we don't use this. We ask to use function because then your functions can be organized in a proper manner. All right? So, this go-to uh, is a way that they did long time ago. But we will do that here So in order to familiarize. So, go sub calls a label subroutine. Uh, subroutine is immediately executed so then return at the end of the subroutine will give you the following line right? and the stop command stops the program execution